Today we're going to make a really nice Victoria sponge. Totally kidding, we're making burgers. Hi everyone, James here from Barbecue.com and welcome back to yet another cook on the channel. Uh, today we're talking about burgers. So I seem to spend most of my time trying to convince people that barbecue is a lot more than just sausages and burgers, but sometimes a burger is hard to beat. So like all foods, everybody has their own way they like to do them. They have their own mix of uh, burger meat for the patty. They have their own toppings they like to use, even down to the buns. Some people like brioche, some people like uh, white rolls. So today I want to show you how I like to do it. So we're going to grind up some of our own meat, uh, we're going to get some of the toppings ready and we're going to put it all together into what I would consider my perfect burger. So with that being said, this is my burger. You can take bits and pieces from it and use it as you wish for to make your own. Um, just put in whatever you like, but hopefully there'll be a few little tips in there that you can pick up and adapt into your own burgers. So to start off with, we have to go with the star of the show and that is the burger patty. So there are lots of different options when it comes to what kind of meat you put into your burger patty. Uh, but the most common cut I would say is probably uh, beef chuck. Now for burgers you're looking at sort of 80-20 mixture of meat to fat. Uh, some people will go to a 70-30. Um, the mixture we're doing today is probably closer to that 70-30. So we're going to use some ground chuck. Uh, but we're also going to add in some uh, minced streaky bacon into the mix as well. Which will add that extra little bit of fat. Um, beef chuck is highly marbled uh, with fat anyway, that's why it's perfect for this kind of thing. Whenever it's ground down, uh, it gives you that perfect sort of ratio for burgers. So if you're just buying the mince from uh, your butcher, you want to ask them for ground chuck. Uh, often if you go in and ask for mince, you'll end up with lean mince, uh, which doesn't have the fat content we need. If lean mince is all you can get, then you might want to up that um, streaky bacon ratio just to get that fat content in there. But if you ask your butcher for ground chuck, he shouldn't have a problem getting it for you. He can also then get you the the ground bacon. So as far as ratios go, we're looking roughly a 4 to 1 mix of ground chuck to uh, streaky bacon. So depending on how many you're cooking for, um, you can work out what weight of each you would need. But for today, I'm going to show you how I grind up my mixture and the process I go through to get those burger patties ready. So for any of you with a Kenwood mixer out there, uh, you can get this attachment which fits onto the front of it. Um, it's the Kenwood Multifood Grinder. Uh, the code for it is AT950. This is the A version. I had a quick look online, I can't find the A version anymore. Uh, it's changed to an X version, I think. So I'll leave links down below for this one here if you want to check it out. But it has the, the meat grinder attachment and it also has the, the sausage maker attachment to go onto as well. So we will make sausage on the channel soon. Uh, but for today, we're just using it to grind up our chuck. If you don't have a food mixer, there are other options available. So you can buy uh, just a standalone electric grinder, um, which won't have any of this gubbins with it. It's just a grinder with this part on it for grinding your meat down. And they generally come with sausage stuffers too. Um, you can also then get a hand grinder, which just clamps onto the side of the bench and you use good old elbow grease to crank the handle. Meat goes in one end, it comes out ground the other. There's nothing fancy about them, but uh, they still get the job done. So uh, if you want this, try doing some of this yourself. Uh, I'll leave links for all those below. You can check out a few different options. So grinding meat is pretty simple, um, but there's a few tips I want to share with you just to uh, help you get the best from it. Tip number one is to keep everything ice cold. Uh, that includes your meat and all your grinding attachments. Uh, so what I like to do is get everything out, um, get my die in, my cutting blades, build the whole attachment up put that and the hopper into the freezer for a good 20 minutes to, so that it's ice cold. Same thing goes for the meat, before I put it through the grinder I'll, uh, I'll cube it up, uh, season it and I'll throw that into the freezer for maybe 10 minutes or so just to make sure it's super cold. The reason for that is whenever those fats start to melt down, wasp, the reason for that is if your attachments are warm or if the, the cut and die inside it's really warm the fats and stuff that are inside your meat tend to just get sticky and they clog up the dye. Whereas if they're nice and cold, uh, the dye can cut them a lot easier and you'll have a, an easier job mincing your meat. So tip number two is to season your meat before you grind it. 
so as I said before, I like to uh, cube my meat up before I put it through the grinder. Uh, at that point, I'll season it with, with whatever seasonings I'm doing. So just depending on sausage or burgers, what I'm doing, what kind of seasoning I would put on them. But season them at that point before you grind it. Uh, I've seen people before then that will grind it, then they'll add the seasons to it and mix it through. And to be honest, it's the way I used to do it. But going back to that first point of those fats melting down, you want to handle that meat as little as possible. So if you season it up beforehand, A, you're not having to handle it afterwards to mix your seasoning in. And B, uh, as that's going through the grinder, you know all those seasonings are well incorporated into the meat. And finally, tip number three is whenever you have finished grinding, you'll find you still have quite a lot of meat inside the, the worm, which is the spiral bit inside the grinder, uh, which is all going to waste. So my third tip is to stuff an old heel of bread down through the grinder. It'll go through the worm, push all that meat out, uh, and as the bread starts coming out through the dye, then you can turn it off and you know you haven't left any meat inside that grinder. If I had to give a bonus tip, it would be to make sure your grinding attachments are always kept really clean. Um, there's so many little parts in them and cracks and grooves and stuff uh, where meat can get stuck and they aren't the easiest things to clean out. So make sure you give them a thorough clean every time you use them. Uh, I would uh, tend to boil mine, so you put all the attachments in a big pot of water and boil them uh, just to make sure any little bits and pieces that are in there aren't um, staying in there. So try and keep them as sterile as possible. The last thing you want is some meat hanging out in there for six months until the next time you use it because it ain't going to smell pretty when you bring it out. One thing that is crucial to remember whenever you're grinding meat is whenever you whenever you start to push meat down into the grinder, you have to be very careful to let it wander around the push it down into the grinder. If you do accidentally do it, then really bad things happen. So that's our meat all ground up. The last thing then to do is just to form them into the burger patties. So you can either use a burger press for it or just do it by hand. Uh, as far as weights go per patty, I prefer quarter pounders. I have made larger half pound ones before. Um, I just think a quarter pounder is a bit easier to get your mouth around and it's a better balance of sort of meat to toppings ratio inside the actual burger so uh, go with whatever you like if you want two quarter pounders one massive half pounder do whatever feels right to you so I've actually made up a slightly bigger batch than I need so we're going to do a couple of burgers today to show this off but the rest of it I'm going to cook up and use it as a pizza topping so uh, make more than you need you can freeze it down put it into the freezer and then whenever uh, you feel like making your own burgers again you can thaw that out and make them into your pies so once you have the burgers formed uh, put them back into the fridge to keep them cold to stop them fats melting down while we get the rest of our toppings ready and get the barbecue fired up Burger toppings are probably the area where most people differ. Everybody has their own favourite things they like to put onto a burger. Today we are keeping it quite simple. So we're going with bacon, cheese, pickle. I can't have a burger without pickle on it. And we'll put a, bit, a little bit of salad in there too. Because you need the green stuff, apparently. The other thing then is some kind of sauce. So some people will mix it up with two sauces. But today we're going quite simple. I have the rampant Angus uh, ketchup from uh, Angus and Oink. I'm going to mix that up with a little bit of mayonnaise just to make a mayo to put onto these burgers. So we'll go ahead and get all that ready and then we're going to talk about the bun. 
So before we go ahead and start putting everything together, let's talk a bit about the bun. Now, this is another point where people differ quite a lot, especially in my house. I prefer burgers in a brioche roll, uh, whereas the rest of the family prefer them in a white roll. Uh, so we often end up buying both at the supermarket. But um, choose whatever one you want. I just think the, the brioche tends to hold together a little bit better if you have a sauce in there, and especially if you have a really juicy burger. Uh, the white rolls tend to just soak everything up and uh, they don't tend to hold together just as well. The other thing I'll say then is toasting. You want to toast your buns. Uh, again, it just crisps up that layer, stops everything soaking into the bun, and nobody likes a soggy bun. So I like to spread a little bit of mayonnaise on them. Some people will use butter, uh, put them directly over the, the coals and leave them there for a few seconds. They don't take very long to crisp up. I find I get a better toast with mayonnaise rather than the using butter on the bun, but again, it's down to yourself. So once you've everything prepared then, all that's left to do is light up the barbecue. So we're using the little Weber going anywhere today. It's more than enough to cook a couple of uh, burgers. I've got a chimney of lumpwood uh, going in that, so we'll tip that out and we'll set it up with the safe zone at one side. Uh, if you're not sure what a safe zone is, uh, you can check out my video on direct cooking and how to set up your barbecue for it. But that'll give us an area to move things to if they start to get a little bit too hot and heavy. Uh, so once those are lit up, we'll get the barbecue set up. Make sure you have all your ingredients to hand. Burger cooks are incredibly quick, so you don't want to be running off looking for something and leaving the grill unattended. Uh, once we get them on, they're going to be on there for a few minutes each side, so uh, be prepared. So once your grill is up to temperature, we're going to go ahead and put the burgers on and then it's also time to get a couple of bits of streaky bacon on too for the top of it. So we have it set up with a direct heat at this side and we have a safe zone here, so if we need to we can move things over to it. So just place the burgers directly over the coals. Do the same with our sticky bagging. Then get the lid back onto it as soon as you can. There's a lot of fat in these and once that starts to cook out, you're going to get flare ups. So keep the lid on just to restrict that airflow a little bit. Okay, after a couple more minutes we should be ready to burn. and then get the lid closed as quick as possible. Our streaky bacon's ready. Don't like it too crispy. The burgers, I'm just going to move them to this side to check the temperature on them. So we'll take it in with the thermopan into the deepest part of the burger. Pretty close. at around 70 so at this point they're going to keep cooking but we want to get a few slices of cheese on I'm just going for cheddar cheese you can go for square dirty burger cheese it's another favorite of mine set that on top then We're going to take our buns and toast them and put the lid on. So we've done them with the mayonnaise, so just set them straight on. They're only going to take a second or two. That should be enough for them. Close the lid up and let that cheese melt. I'm just checking with the thermopan now, right into the middle of the meat. You can see they're hitting 75 there, so they're more than safe to eat. So we'll get them off and get them built up. So we've got our bottom bun here. You see how nicely the mayonnaise is crisped up. A couple of each hard edges, but there's nothing wrong with that. 
first thing we go on with then is a good dollop of our Angus and Oink mayonnaise. The rampant Angus ketchup. Spread that out. Next, on with some of the green stuff. The green stuff of choice today is some baby spinach leaves. You need some of it, but not too much. Next then we'll go on with one of our burgers. We have our cheese melted on it. On top of that then we go with our streaky bacon. Just torn this up to make it a little bit easier to get on. And to me it wouldn't be a burger without them. We'll put on a couple of gurgans. Then lastly, on the top bun, we go with another dollop of our mayonnaise. Stick that on top. thing left to do and that's give it a taste. Go with this half. Still nice and juicy inside. It's the big advantage of grinding your own meat. You know exactly what's in there and you can control the fat content that goes into it. Right, this isn't going to be pretty. Oh I love burgers. How can anyone eat a burger with no pickles in it? That funkiness against the cheese and the flavouring in the burger and it's just so juicy. Honestly I could take or leave the green stuff. And that rampant Angus ketchup's nice too. Little tingle of heat going through there. Oh it's so good. Mmm. Right. So there is a lot more to barbecue than just burgers and sausages, sometimes a damn good burger is all you need. Give it a try, if you haven't tried grinding your own meat or at least making your own patties, you can get the butcher to do it if you don't have a grinder. If you want to get a grinder, which I highly recommend if you're into barbecue, making your own sausage and grinding your own meats and stuff, and you can make up your own blends of meat, that's such a good idea. So you can check out all those links below for the attachment that I use and some of the other options available too. See, this wasn't really a recipe as such, this is just how I like to make my burgers. They're not the prettiest in the world, but they taste damn good. So I'll also leave a link in the description for the full write-up for this cook, including the full measurements for the burger blend, and then the other bits and pieces that went into the burger, and the full step-by-step -step guide. So you can check that out on my website, I'll leave the link below. So give it a try. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions um, about how they were done, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next episode.